James Dennis, Alan Turing, Hamlin appear to crack the code on the final restart of Sunday night's race at Richmond. But did he cheat? Hopefully some of you all got the joke there at the start of this, but the biggest question coming out of Richmond on Sunday night, Easter Sunday night, NASCAR decides to run their race at Richmond, and of course there has to be a late race caution to set up a little bit of drama to a rather mundane second half of that race, and Denny Hamlin makes it out of the pit stops first, so he's controlling the restart. The question now is, did he jump that final restart, and should he have been penalized for a restart violation? When you look at the video right here, and I'll put up a quick clip because if I make it any longer, Fox will flag it and take it down. You can clearly see he rolls before he gets to that restart zone. You can't roll before the white line of the restart zone. He clearly launches before then, and it should have been a restart violation. Or at the very least, it should have at least been under review. After the race, NASCAR says the restart's not under review. And it's like, well, I mean, how can it not be? Martin Truex Jr. was furious about it. That's the reason why he ran into the 11 car and tried to punt the 5 car and put him into the wall and then just got put into the wall by the 5 car instead and appeared to break a toe link as well. Truex was incensed by the looks of it, and he had every right to be because Denny jumped the restart. And it's kind of funny because just a day ago on Saturday at the Xfinity race at Richmond, they did review a restart when it appeared that Eric Almirola kind of snookered the whole field Rusty Wallace style and, and pulled one over. They ultimately ruled that that one was fine as well because very rarely do you actually get somebody called for a restart violation. But this one was pretty clear. He clearly launched before he got to that white line. And of course, like everything in NASCAR, they're all judgment calls. So if they want to go on Sirius XM NASCAR this week, which they definitely will, and say something about this, which they probably will as well, I'm fine with that. If the explanation is good to why it wasn't deemed, you know, an illegal restart or why it wasn't reviewed, fine. I'm fine with that. I can live with that. But at the same time, I want to know why it wasn't reviewed because it clearly looks like he jumped. Quick update, NASCAR Senior Vice President Elton Sawyer did update everybody on the restart violation, or what we thought was a restart violation. This is his explanation to Bob Pockris and the rest of the media. End of the race, said he thought Kenny jumped the restart. I'm curious, did you guys see anything? Yeah, we, like we reviewed review it. Yeah, we reviewed that. We looked at it. Um, obviously, the 11 was the control vehicle. It was awful close, but uh, we deemed it to be a good, good restart. Even after hearing that, I don't love the answer to that. It seemed very dismissive, being like, yeah, no, no, we, we reviewed it, it's fine. I don't love that idea of it, and hopefully they do take a deeper look at it. Obviously, nothing will change now, but eh, at least they addressed it. I'm sure this story won't go away, though. I mean, the guy wasn't, I mean, Denny wasn't really a factor all day. Trex should have won this race, and then he just comes in and steals a win at the end. I despise when the fastest car does not win the race and instead somebody just comes in and steals it at the end because of a nonsense caution. A nonsense caution set up by Bubba Wallace who did get loose and got into the five car on the front stretch, spun the five car out. He manages to rebound for a third place finish. Kyle Larson that is. Bubba finishes 13th. Somehow it got the worst end out of that for him. The TRD camp couldn't have been happy about that caution coming out. Of course, one of their cars still ends up winning. I know the tinfoil hat club is definitely on Facebook right now. I can't wait to read those fire comments being like of course they wanted a toyota to win sorry <clears throat> of course they want a toyota to win toyota owners 400 well there are two toyos on the front row it was going to be denny or martin either way i apologize for doing a stereotypical voice right there i'm actually not sorry about it but and that's kind of what I would expect out of the Facebook crowd, and I can't wait to read the comments on the video that I post about it, because I clearly think that Denny Hamlin jumped. Again, I'll put up a really quick clip of it right here. Look, launches before he gets to that restart zone. I don't know what, I, I honestly don't know what they're watching on the NASCAR side of things, and again, if there's a good explanation for it, I'm all ears. I love a good explanation. Give me a visual, even. I love a good visual as well, but I definitely think that he jumped. And it's not like I said at the beginning where he cracked a code. I think he just mashed the throttle before anybody else and, you know, got that good jump there at the start. And Truex kind of drove him down, drove him down to the uh, inside of the track going into turn one there. But man, certainly looks like he jumped. At least something enter entertaining happened at the end of this race because the first 20 laps, 30 laps of this race were good on the wet weather tires. You had a lot of passing, guys running side by side, really good racing. And then on lap 30, well, on lap 30, NASCAR decided to run 18 laps of caution to put the dry tires back on and then do some more dry into the racetrack when they should have red flagged it, even though they said they weren't going to count the laps. We're not going to get into it right now. 
and then it was fine. And then in stage two, there was actually really good, interesting strategy going on until Kyle Busch decided to scrape the wall. At least he scraped the wall, unlike that Haley Deegan caution in the Xfinity race at Phoenix, where she didn't even touch the wall. And NASCAR threw a caution for that. At least Kyle touched the wall, uh, lightly, still touched the wall. That ruined all the strategy in stage two, which is actually playing out to be pretty interesting. You had a two-stop strategy versus a one-stop strategy. Would Larson make the one-stop strategy work? Would Truex be able to make the two-stop strategy work? We were going to find out until put it out, and they panic hit the yellow caution button and ruined all of our fun. And then from there, I mean, stage three was just, I'm a guy that likes a good strategy race. I can get behind almost every race out there. That was not a good race that we saw in the second half of this. It was bad. Everybody was basically on the same strategy. Denny was on like a 10 lap different strategy than everybody else there at the end. Slightly entertaining, but man, was it really hard to pass. And the words of Cliff Daniels from Kyle Larson's pit box, there's been no passing in the top 15. And he was right. There was little to zero passing, which is unfortunate. But... None of that matters because Denny Hamlin clearly jumped the restart, or at least in my opinion, he did. So let me know in the comments, do you think Denny jumped the restart? Because it appears that he did, and he should have been given a penalty for it, especially coming off a week at Coda where you were handing out track violations left and right. We can keep a Hawkeye view of that, but we can't watch a restart here where the guy clearly jumps. Again, if there's a good explanation, I'm all ears, but... Let me know in the comments what you think. Did he jump? Did he not? Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at BreakHard. Instagram and Twitter at BreakHardBlog. 